Dr. Sharif Abdullah offers a unique, hopeful, and visionary perspective on the persistent challenges of our time. His perspective is shaped by his urban upbringing of poverty and violence, his Ivy League education, and his work with impacted communities in America and in 45 countries around the world. His spiritual outlook is rooted in the consciousness of dozens of religions, faith traditions, and spiritual practices. Sharif offers this unique viewpoint, helping us chart a course that explains where we've been, where we are now, and how we get to a positive future that works for all living beings. Hello, Sharif here. And today comes part two of our um, videos on the underculture, the culture that lies beneath what we see in mainstream media, be beneath what we see in uh, when we start, start thinking about middle class, etc. And that's really the, the core of the problem that we have in our society. We have a group of people in every community that, that where progress has passed them by. This is true in the black community, it's true in the brown community, it's true in the red community, it's true in the white community, um, where people are stuck in a sense of you know the merry-go-round of low self-esteem, the merry-go-round of uh, disrespect for oneself, disrespect for others, disrespect for one's environment, and disrespect for the entire society. Now, you can't change one of those factors. You have to change all of them, and that change comes within our consciousness. I hope you're getting by now the fact that I'm not talking about a whole bunch of different issues. This is all one issue. One day I'm talking about the environment, the next day I'm talking about politics, the next day I'm talking about economics, and now I'm talking about culture and underculture, and it's all the same thing. And the change that has to take place, it's all the same change. Once we get to that point, we can start seeing some things. Once we see these things, we can start changing them. Until we get to that point, nothing changes. So the problem that we had 40 years ago, we still got it. And despite the hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billions of dollars, we're going to throw at this problem over the next few years. The problem still won't change. So 40 years from now, and I could, I could still wind up being here to see it. I can, I can say, I told you so. That problem will continue to persist until we take effective action to get rid of it. Back when I was growing up, um, I was a child of the Black Power Movement. I was growing up while the Black Power Movement was growing up. And we were referring to each other. We would use the consciousness to refer to each other as brothers and sisters. We would refer to our elders as Mr., as Sir. We would refer to our female elders as queens. We would refer to each other as men. You know, I was what, 14, 15 years old, but I was thinking of myself as a man. Fast forward 40 years, and young people today are referring to each other as niggers, as bitches, as dogs, as whores. This is the, this is the language of what they call music. Every time it's repeated, it cuts a little bit more out of your heart. Every time it's, it's repeated, it diminishes a little bit more of your consciousness. Every time it's repeated, 
we go swimming in this pool of disrespect. I disrespect myself when I'm saying it. I'm disrespecting the other, whoever I'm referring to. I'm disrespecting my entire society. And that floats around and that keeps, keeps connecting. So we start connecting the consciousness of disrespect and despair. We start connecting the consciousness of spiritual starvation. You're familiar with spiritual starvation because I talked about it in creating a world that works for all. You're, you're, you're uh, familiar with the hunger for the sacred because I talk about it in creating a world that works for all. And these are the steps that we need to take to get ourselves out of the thinking of low self-esteem, of demeaning behaviors, of putting down ourselves, allowing ourselves to be put down and putting down the other. We ask the police department to respect us more than we respect ourselves. That doesn't happen. It never happens. Okay. The, the only way that you get respect is being respectful, being respectful to yourself, being respectful to the other, being respectful to the people that you say that you love and being respectful to the people that need your love desperately, your enemy. So our challenge is how do we do that? How do we actually practice our, our inclusivity? How do we practice our consciousness? It's difficult because we created an, an entire society that robs everyone of their self-respect. It's not just the black underclass. It's the black middle class, this is the black upper class, it's the white classes, it's everybody in the society. It robs everyone of self-respect in order to drive discontent. The society wants you to be fearful and discontented so they can sell you more stuff. They wanna sell you more stuff because they wanna make more money. Not that they need the money, they're caught in this cycle that you've heard me talk about before of auto totality. This is, we're living in a totalitarian state, but it's on autopilot. Nobody controls it. Nobody runs it. Nobody controls it because nobody can shut it off. We can't shut it off, but what we can do is ignore it. What we can do is focus our energy on another, in another direction, on another vision. So let me share this with you, if I may, by sharing my screen with you. Um, and the first thing I wanna share with you is a quote. People who love themselves don't hurt other people. The more we hate ourselves, the more we want others to suffer. Look at how true that is in our societies today. Look at how true that is when we think about the nature of society today. And I need to share a different screen with you now. So I wanna to talk to you about what won't work to change the society and what will work to change the society. I've done workshops on this before, but I wanna do this very quickly so you can see that in this context. If you think you can practice the status quo and that things will change, I would strongly urge you to think differently. If you think that practicing a fantasy, having a fantasy view of how the world works is actually going to change the world, then 
Um, good luck with that. Uh, what do I mean by fantasies? I was at a sushi restaurant, um, you know, the kind where you sit all sitting side by side back in the days when you could sit side by side with strangers. And um, there are these young men uh, who were sitting uh, down the counter from me. And I was overhearing their conversations. And one said, one was saying to the other, wow, that was a really beautiful horse you were riding the other day. And I kind of snuck a peek at them and they didn't strike me as horse riders. I was like, really um, uh, like, well, maybe, maybe there's hope for the youth of today. And, uh, and the, the, one, the other said, yeah, well, your horse was really nice too. But yeah, I, I agree. My, the horse I was riding was really nice. And then he says, then did you see what happened when I chopped that guy's head off? Wow. It just, blood just went everywhere. And they start laughing. And I realize that they're talking about a world that I don't share. They're talking about a world that doesn't exist outside of digits on a screen. And that fantasy world and fantasy worlds like that occupy a great deal of our time and our attention. We need to stop that. Doing nothing will not change anything. Doing nothing includes complaining. Doing nothing is making a statement that has um, a ring of truth to it, but is not designed to change anything. And I say that, and you've heard me talk about the fact that uh, the Black Lives Matter phenomena does not have a goal that I can perceive. Uh, it doesn't have a way of measuring their, the, the, um, uh, the, the way to get to that goal. That we can spend hundreds of thousands, millions upon millions of dollars, and at the end of the day have done nothing. And that won't work to change anything. That leads to the other thing that doesn't work, and that's practicing throwing money at things. Uh, we, we, we have in this society uh, a really um, bad habit of thinking that we're, we're solving a problem by throwing money at it, especially when we, if you're in Congress and you get to throw somebody else's money at it. Um, the, the, uh, our willingness to spend money that we didn't earn is uh, really, really amazing. So let's look at, and the, as you know, I don't dwell on what doesn't work. Let's look at what will work. Setting the intention to transform the underculture is the first and most important thing that you have to do. We're operating without um, intentions. We're operating um, with uh, these vague hopes, these vague dreams, and even vaguer goals that have a, 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 an interesting ring to them, but will lead to absolute disaster. Things like um, defund the police. That's, a, that's an interesting catchphrase. I have absolutely no uh, particular love for the police. I would love to see them get transformed uh, to something that actually works. But defunding the police is, is a cure that will be worse than the disease. Another thing that will work is practicing a vision to set the vision for the society that we choose to, um, to inhabit. Uh, I think about Martin Luther King talking about I have a dream, that that was setting a, a high bar and a vision for an entire society, and we should be doing that, as opposed to saying things that may sound good to the group that we're working with, and doesn't sound good to anybody else. 
uh, practicing inclusivity. Inclusivity means we are one. We are one means I will not allow anyone to diminish anyone's status. I will, uh, you know, I definitely talk about behavior. I talk about my own behavior and, and where I fall short of my own goals. I'm talking about others' behavior and where they fall short of their goals. But talking about behavior is not talking about anyone's status. And um, I think all of us have to uh, get really serious about not allowing anyone to diminish your status, not to put down black people, not to put down white people, not to put down women, not to put down men. We can talk about behavior, but we can't talk about status. And practicing the sacred and doing and, and practicing the sacred to me means treating all beings as though they are part of the one. And that means everyone has to support the society we're talking about. That means a lot of people have to transcend their consciousness in order to get to the point where they're supporting it. But we're not cutting anybody out of the society. That's not even possible, let alone desirable. And so our goal is to get to the point where I can look at all beings and they can look at me. And we know that we're looking at all of us being one. Our, our challenge is how do we do that? The biggest challenge is to set the intention to do that, to say, I'm going to do that, as opposed to standing over on the side and saying, well, hmm, let's see how they do, or let's, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put a little bit of money into this, I'll put a little bit of time in that, and well, if it doesn't work, I'll go back to, back to my normal. Um, <clears throat> there was a Zen saying that um, we should seek enlightenment the way that a man whose hair is on fire seeks a pond. We have to act like our hair is on fire. We have to act like what we're doing right now is setting the seeds for the society that we want to create. The people who are going out putting up posters saying defund the police or abolish the police are talking about creating a kind, the kind of society I don't want to live in. They are not the leaders of the kind of society I want to live in. The people who are going out recognizing that we are one, that all of us, all human beings, and then all other living beings, we are all one. And therefore, we should be treating each other different than we're treating right now. It's a lot, but what choice do we have? Uh, the, another quote that's in Creating a World That Works for All, um, when someone asked Mikhail Gorbachev, um, what did he think the chances were that they were going to be able to reform the Soviet Union? He said, why in the world will we even talk about that, about what, how, what chance we've got? He said, the, the person who is dropped in the middle of the ocean doesn't talk about how their chances of getting from one shore to the other. They just start swimming. So what we have to do, not wait around for anybody else, but we have to start swimming and start swimming together. I'm, I'm with you on that journey. Thank you. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the Patreon and put some, put a few dollars in the pot. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. You are invited to participate in the discussions and activities that will define a positive future for all. We are at the cusp of the expansion of our human consciousness beyond the limitations of our past. Together, we can envision a world that embraces our human potential. Together, we can create a world that can truly work for all living beings.